Yeah, okay, let's uh, <laughs> try this again, shall we? So I'm uh, recording this, um, you know, while well, not playing a game, a video game at the same time, so I should be able to concentrate on what I, well, have to say about the whole thing. So again, about the Swedish election, uh, first things first. Uh, when we do have election, we typically vote on uh, three things at the same time. One is the uh, national parliament, uh, one is uh, a regional administration, that is a uh, could be several municipalities, and then we have said municipalities. Uh, of these three, of course, the parliament is the national parliament is the most visible. The uh, second one uh, is practically invisible, and uh, yeah, the municipal administration uh, is only visible when they do something wrong or stupid or uh, ethically um, questionable. <laughs> Uh, however, the uh, election for this year is unusually dramatic, uh, in, part, in part because we've had this heat wave that uh, the rest of Europe has also suffered from, right? Um, so that gives more urgency to the environmental debate. And uh, as you can imagine, the environmental party and uh, uh, left-wing party uh, I was going to say parties, but actually it's <laughs> only the left party, um, not so much the, the Social Democrat uh, party. Um, yeah, they've uh, capitalized on this, uh, made some noise about the environment, which I approve of. I think it is uh, high time that we actually do something credible about uh, the climate change or global warming. and. Uh, if uh, you happen to think that global warming is a hoax, believe me, you are not going to convince me. So, if you want to remark on that, just not on the channel, please. It's not going to end well. So, global warming has been an absorbable thing in Sweden for many years. Uh, and, you know, there are statistics and all kinds of support for that. But uh, if we have many more summers like this, like this one that we've had with um, severe drought and crops failing, um, we're, we're gonna have some actual starvation problems here. It's, um, yeah, it's um, not painting a pretty picture. I'm not trying to be overly dramatic. Um, and well, for the record, I don't actually know for sure that this is how it's going to turn out. But uh, that is um, the situation as I see it. Uh, I am being sincere, at least, if maybe not 100% educated on the matter. Uh, yeah, so I should probably take this opportunity to point out that I am a musician turned molecular bio biologist working now as a lab rat at a hospital. Uh, so I am not a climate scientist. I am not a political uh, person. I'm not, I'm not politically active, I should say. I'm just a, well, hobby, fascinated kind of a thing. If <laughs> all this nonsense going on. And, uh, yeah, I'm not a journalist either. So if I fail my research or fail my journalistic uh, ethics or dil due diligence, I just don't know what they are. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you're free to say so in the comment section, of course, but uh, just keep in mind, this is my opinion. I am uh, not a professional, uh, but um, I like to talk about this because I think it's, uh, I, I think it is important for uh, making sense of the developments around the Swedish election coming up. So, one major... Um, uh, shall we say, well, point or situation is that we've had a, a rise in um, both ex both far-right uh, activism but also uh, less militant uh, groups like the Sweden Democrats. Um, and yeah, they overtly, at least, like to try to distance themselves from um, their, uh, uh, you know, passed as an actual white supremacist movement. Um, we, I mean, 
uh, yeah, you can also, of course, criticize the uh, left party because they used to be communists for the same reason. And uh, yeah, th th uh, there's a there's a lot going on there. Um, I will I won't cover it, uh, but just uh, just so you know, I am aware that uh, if you want to criticize the Sweden Democrats for their dark past, it would be hypocritical to not also have issues with the left party's past as well. And uh, yeah, to be honest, I have concerns, but they are not as big as for the, the Sweden Democrats, who for um, just, well, not even 20 years ago were posing with Nazi paraphernalia and doing book burnings at their party meetings. Just, yeah. Uh, the left party has not been doing that for a very long time. <laughs> Um, but besides the Sweden Democrats, we have also had, oh, yeah, maybe I should say that first, actually. Uh, in part of, uh, well, in part of this, uh, try to attempt to distance themselves from white supremacy, the Sweden Democrats, um, have, has this policy of, uh, zero tolerance uh, towards racism, uh, which is a big fucking joke to just everyone else in the country. Everyone who is not a Sweden Democrat, and frankly quite a few of the Sweden Democrats as well, think that's just a big just nonsense, a big nothing burger that uh, they only use to uh, uh, get rid of inconvenient um, people who just air out their uh, racism uh, online. Um, and, uh, well, uh, not only that, but, uh, a while back, uh, they, uh, invoked this to, uh, uh, pretty much kick out the, uh, their entire youth, um, uh, well, youth organization. <laughs> uh, and uh, that is relevant because this youth organization then went on to form a new new far-right uh, uh, <clears throat> political party called Allianz for Sverige, Alliance for Sweden, which, as you can imagine, is closely modeled on the German Allianz für Deutschland. They do pretty much the same policy, same uh, argumentation, uh, uh, and they say, uh, uh, well, uh, part of their selling point is uh, we're not as wishy-washy as the Sweden Democrats. If you want real far-right action, you, you come to us. And uh, all the rest of us who see the Sweden Democrats as just, well, racist thugs, which, okay, to be fair, they, well, uh, yeah, I should say that at least 90% of them are not actually violent thugs. Some are. Um, some have been uh, kicked out of the party for that reason, but I mean, when they were caught. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I just uh, want to be uh, transparent about uh, my attitude to the Sweden Democrats. I, I have no trust for them. Uh, with the uh, large uh, boost of members they've had over the last few years, it, uh, you know, should... I mean, just by statistics, it should... It, I mean, it should be quite possible that some basically okay people have joined up with them, uh, and I don't want to just throw them out uh, in the bathwater as well. Uh, but yeah, I will not vote Weed Democrat under, I mean, for, for any excuse, for, for any reason, under any circumstance, Sweden Democrats is a big nope, as far as I'm concerned. Um... And yeah, Alliance for Sweden want to be even more extreme than that. Yeah, uh, fun times. Um, a more interesting uh, development was when uh, the uh, leading terrorist organization. Um, I am actually not kidding you here. <laughs> I mean, we haven't called it terrorism yet, but they have been... Uh, linked to bombings of 
um, arsons at uh, refugee uh, shelters um, and uh, just uh, inciting violence against journalists and uh, I think uh, police uh, officials maybe, and uh, yeah. I mean just they're not good people that, that is obvious if you just uh, try to follow their activities online I mean just okay if you can find one of their internal forums and understand what they say well like okay yeah uh, actually you know never mind just uh, okay this is an opinion piece that is my opinion and well that, that is my interpretation uh, if you look up what is said about them and what they have been linked to by yourself and uh, do you and um, out of the numbers yourself I am convinced that you will agree that uh, they can credibly be called a terrorist organization they applied for permission to uh, hand out flyers uh, during the uh, uh, election in um, at least two places uh, in, in one uh, town they got permission that is also the uh, strongest uh, Nazi foothold in Sweden I kid you not the second is a place a little closer to home where my uncle lives actually uh, or well near where my uncle lives anyway um, first they had a mission and uh, then uh, this, this was appealed and some um, court uh, uh, blocked this permission then that appeal well then that ruling was appealed further and uh, now uh, the uh, leading uh, terrorist organization called Nordiska Motståndsrörelsen or Nordic Resistance Movement they now have permission to do their flyer handout again if with some more restrictions than uh, they want that they you know were going to get at first but uh, yeah we are going to have actual Nazis um, walking the street and handing out flyers and uh, just uh, being around um, presumably causing trouble and uh, intimidating um, their opposition during uh, election season what could possibly go wrong there? Let's see, was there something else? Uh, yeah, uh, immigration. Uh, I should also mention that at least. We used to have a, a pretty generous uh, asylum policy, as I understand it. Lately, uh, it's been more restrictive. I was trying to think uh, of how it uh, came to be that way, but uh, I, well, I failed to think of anything. Um, I mean, yeah, the problem with that uh, whole debate is that we really only have two extremes and one batched crazy wing of, in, well, in the in the uh, immigration debate um, I mean uh, I mentioned the uh, racist parties right uh, of course it stands to reason that they want to kick the refugees out and uh, yeah by the way uh, about Alliance for Sverige or Alliance for Sweden um, they have been sending uh, little leaflets to uh, <laughs> to people um, I don't know how uh, um, I could, how naturalized they are, how long they've been uh, uh, Swedish citizens, but um, mainly two Swedish citizens actually, with the uh, title uh, that hey, it's time to go home. Very classy. They have also been seen in the subway uh, sticking up uh, caricaturized Jew noses on uh, uh, political ads uh, featuring. Um, well, party leaders. Uh, the most hilarious, <laughs> uh, well, if, if we can call it hilarious, I mean, darkly hilarious, I guess, is when 
when they uh, stuck a Jew nose on uh, the uh, party leader for the moderates, who has uh, been, you know, he has shown the most willingness to have a dialogue with this batshit crazy uh, right wing. Um, if he's uh, supposed to be, you know, too much uh, lefty Jewish conspiracy nonsense, I mean, just what the fuck are they? Oh, those guys even smoking. But yeah, so we have this completely uh, crazy wing over there that want every immigrant just to just disappear, be kicked out of Sweden, uh, just go away, please. And uh, we have the more restrictive policy that we have now. And my interpretation, at least, is that this uh, faction uh, has representatives in both the Social Democrats and the Moderates, which is not something you see every day. Also, the Liberals. Um, and then there is, well, really nothing in between that and uh, the other extreme on the left, where they want a, uh, well, not necessarily completely free immigration, but uh, significantly more generous. Uh, those parties involve the environmental party, uh, centrist party, uh, and the left party. I honestly don't know where the uh, uh, Christian Democrats stand on the issue. They've been a bit uh, all over the map. <laughs> Almost, uh, well, depending on which month you check. Uh, uh, there's also this uh, feminist initiative. They uh, they are very devout humanists. Uh, let's just leave it at that. So they also want a very generous uh, um, refugee policy. So yeah, there's nothing between that extreme and the policy we have at this moment, uh, which. Call, which poses a bit of a problem for those of uh, those of us who want something in between. <laughs> I mean, we want. Uh, I okay. I, I'll just speak for myself here. I want to see a uh, policy more generous than what we are having right now, which is, uh, but still not completely free and just unregulated. Um, and moderated by our capacity to actually receive these refugees, both in terms of available housing, uh, teaching them the language, and uh, well, having jobs for them, basically. No political party is championing that. So if I were to cast a vote based on uh, just my opinion on the uh, whole immigration, uh, well, my side in the whole immigration debate, I would have nothing to vote for. I would, well, have to <laughs> uh, for my own political party, pretty much. Um, since the election uh, is <laughs> on uh, September 9th, <laughs> yeah, uh, not gonna happen. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's just um, an example, pretty much. Uh, let's see, was I going to say anything else, or did I have... Did I mention that in the video description? Oh, oh yeah, no, I... Uh, yeah, this is my second attempt doing this, and I... Uh, uh, yeah, I copied the video description from, from the previous attempt, and I noticed that what I was about to say I have already put in the video description, so uh, I uh, uh, recommend that you just read that. And uh, that has been um, pretty much this uh, video. So, yeah. Um, 
we'll just see what gameplay footage I slapped this on top of. Uh, maybe or maybe not. Uh, Shinmin Kamen Tensei 3 again. It, it was a bit of a hassle getting it to record, honestly. Uh, I did get it to work, obvi obviously, but you know, I have to mess around with the uh, uh, screen output uh, in the uh, PlayStation 3 settings and uh, just whatever. Um, so, this has been. Well, <laughs> yeah, this video, again, uh, this is just to give you a bit of a primer and uh, help you understand uh, what is going on uh, with the uh, Swedish election, which is really quite, uh, it's really, really quite a lot of drama this time around. Um, so yeah, until um, next time. Now glows with a strong and steady light. You touch the.